Hello guys, you are most welcome back again to my channel. My name is Umbar Farouk Mutari. Um, we are going to continue with our lesson that we treated the last time we were discussing about light. So we've got into what you mean by the rectilineal propagation of light. Rectilineal propagation of light. So the law says that light travels in a straight line, basically. Light travels in a straight line. Now, to demonstrate this, we use what you call the cardboard experiment. So, as you can see in diagram A, what we require is first we require three pieces of cardboard A, B, and C. The cardboards are cut into squares of equal sizes and we make holes at their exact centers. Okay, we make three holes at the exact centers. Then we need a cardboard holder. This thing there is a cardboard holder. We put them there on the cardboard holder. Then the observer stands at one end of the cardboard, whilst a light source here we've chosen a candle is placed at the other end. Now to ensure that these three cardboards A, B, and C okay in a straight line. What you want to do is you can pass through a thread um, through the through the holes, straighten it up to ensure that they're okay in a straight line. So that is the first thing that you do. Now, what does the observer see? So here we summarize. We said that in diagram A, the holes are made in this to okay in a straight line. Or else in diagram B, you realize that there is a slight shift in the second cardboard, that is cardboard B. So the holes do not occur in a straight line. Okay, so what is our observation? So we observe that uh, in A, the observer sees the light. However, in B, the observer does not see the light. So our conclusion is that light travels in a straight line. That is obvious because in diagram A, the holes occurred in a straight line, and in diagram B, the holes did not occur in a straight line. So of what use or benefit are these rectilinear propagation of light all about? Well, we itemize three of them here. A, the pinhole camera is based on this property or law. Then two, um, formation of shadows, the formation of shadows, and three, uh, formation of eclipse. So we want to, first of all, in this video, treat the first one, A, which is the pinhole camera. So what is this pinhole camera thing? So we can see one, it is made of a light, tight wooden or cardboard box. That means that we design it in such a way that light does not get to enter into it from the sides. Okay, light does not enter into it from the sides. So you can use either wooden material or a cardboard to design such a box. Then two, a small hole. So I can't really emphasize on this small, but we make a very small hole. The hole is usually made of a pin to ensure that it's quite small. That is to control the amount of light entering inside it. Because inside a pinhole camera, if the amount of light was to be like a lot, then the image quality will be very less. So we want little amount of light to enter at a, a given time. So this might also pose as a disadvantage because the the smaller the size of the hole, the longer it takes for enough light from the object to enter into the pinhole camera for the purpose of forming an image. So it has its ups and downs. Then three, inside is painted black. Inside the pinhole camera is painted black for the sole reason that we don't want to uh, get a reflection of light. So the information of light is basically based on our ability to accumulate light inside the box. So if the light entrant was to then come out, then it defe uh, defeats the purpose. So we don't want that. We paint the inside black. Black bodies normally absorb light. So the light that enters gets to stay there. Then four, we make a screen at the back of the uh, back of the pinhole camera. You can see the screen here. That is where our image is going to be formed. Now, 
formation of image. First, I must emphasize that an image is formed when light rays intersect or they meet. So if the light rays that are intersecting are actual light rays, normally actual light rays in diagrams, as you can see in this very diagram, we use continuous lines to represent actual rays. If they were virtual, then we use broken light. So actual light rays um, intersect to form real images, and that is what we have here. So what do we say here? Actual light rays from the object F enter into the pinhole and an image is formed on the screen. Now, this aperture or this hole is normally covered with a shutter or a um, black cloth. So to see the form, normally you would have to take out the, remove the shutter so you can see the image. Okay? So the rays intersect and they form an inverted image. The image they form here, inverted. Take note, we have F as an object, but the image appears to be an inversion of the F. Okay. Now, so here we can finally discuss about the characteristics of the image. This one, the image is inverted, as we pointed out. The image is diminished. It's smaller than the object. The image we have here, the diagram of the pinot camera does not help us much, but the reality is that if a large tree was to stand in front of the pinot camera, a very small image of such a tree will be formed inside. And finally, the image is real, as we mentioned, because it is formed as a result of the intersection of actual rays. So, with this, we come to the end of this video. And do well to subscribe to the channel. See you next time.